Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys today? I'm excited to be with you. Usually Saturdays is scrapbook Saturday for me and I do scrapbook pages and those are posted on my blog where I do blog every day. But today I'm bringing you a 3D box. Don't mind my little puppy here. She is my Yorkie. She's kind of old and um, she has a little heart condition. So if she coughs a little bit, she's on medicine for it. But sometimes you'll hear her snoring in here. She does hang out with me during the day. So don't mind if you hear <laughs> her and her little noises. Um, I'm bringing to you the Friends of the Forest stamp set this week and it's the last day of this stamp set, but I just didn't feel like this stamp set lent itself really well to scrapbooking. So I did what I love the most, which is 3D. And I made this adorable little bunny burrow out of a mini Kirby Keepsake box. Now the Kirby Keepsake box has been retired, but it is on the clearance rack right now. So you can get this box at a discounted price in the clearance rack on my store. So you go to inkyhandswarmhearts.com. Once you're there, click on the words shop with me. And when you click on those, you'll be taken to my online store where you can purchase anything you'd like. Look under sales and specials and click clearance rack. And then you will be taken to this really awesome Curvy Keepsake box die, which we are using today. Also, we're using today the Confetti Borders Flower Border Punch. So definitely check that out too. That's also in the clearance rack. And um, I love doing 3D treats, and this is a perfect little treat to give at Easter time. All next week, I'll be doing Easter treats. So this was kind of like a segue into Easter on the last day of this week. So um, definitely check it out. Like I said, I'm using Friends of the Forest. I'm also using these little dots here, these little splatter dots from Forever Fern, because everyone needs splatter dot stamps, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you what I did. Um, I wanted a two-tone colored box, so therefore I cut out of two different colors of cardstock. I cut out of um, so suede, soft suede, um, the handle section, and then out of old olive, the slotted section of this box. And what we're going to do is along the score line here, we're just going to trim right along that line. We're going to trim these extra pieces off. And we're just gonna have this section, and we're gonna do the same thing on the soft suede section right along that score line there. So those are the two pieces that you will need. Now I chose to make the brown section the bottom of my boxes, and this one was the green. So it's really up to you, whichever one you want to be the outside. I'm gonna do the green this time. So I'm going to actually attach the brown to the inside here. So I'm gonna lift up along those score marks so I make sure that I adhere properly. And I'm gonna be using our wet adhesive. And we will go ahead and add that to the middle section here. And I'm gonna overlap the brown on top because I want the green to be on the outside. And I'm gonna flip this over and just double check that I'm along those score marks there and that everything looks good that the two pieces still fold up easily, that I have everything in the right place, which I do. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. And we are going to stamp with the splatter dots. And we're gonna do that on the soft suede. I'm gonna flip the box over, and we're gonna go ahead and start with that. I'm just gonna ink this up, and I'm gonna stamp those little splatter dots all over the brown section because it's kind of like the dirt of the bunny burrow. I'm kind of partial to bunnies because my daughter has a bunny. His name is Jasper and he is just the cutest. He's free roaming. So he uses the litter box and 
He's just the cutest little bunny. And so I love bunnies because of him. He's sweet. And a lot of times he is in here with me, but he is not today. Now we're going to stamp this border from Friends, Forest Friends, or Friends of the Forest, sorry. <laughs> and we're gonna use the old olive and we're gonna stamp it on the old olive side. So I'm gonna stamp that along the border bottom section here on both of these pieces because I want that to be along the bottom of the box. So that's it for stamping in the old olive color. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean my stamp. And then lastly, I'm going to stamp our bunny. And here he is on a scrap piece of basic white cardstock. I'm gonna be using the Tuxedo Black ink, the Memento. And we're gonna stamp him down. And there's no coloring in for him. So he will just be um, fussy cut out. And I will give you a tip. In order to get the box to be bowed properly, you see how it is a curvy box, hence the name mini curvy keepsake box. Um, because it's curved like that, we are gonna use our bone folder in a minute, as soon as I'm done with this bunny, and we're gonna mold the box and get it prepared to be put together. So because it does, the sides are curved, we're gonna use the bone folder to get that curved. And what we're gonna do is break down the fibers in the cardstock by running the bone folder around it. And I'll show you in just a second. There's our bunny. All right, so I'm gonna grab my bone folder here and I'm gonna hold, oh, before I do that, I definitely want a hole for the bunny because, you know, the bunnies do burrow into a hole. And so we're gonna be using early espresso. And let me grab a scrap of that and I am going to um, punch a circle out of it. You can also use your layering circle dies. I almost forgot about this part. And um, it is the little, um, it is the little hole that the, bun you know, bunnies definitely uh, love being outside, right? They are outdoor creatures, hence this uh, Friends of the Forest stamp set. But um, they like to burrow into tight spots. And even my daughter's bunny likes to do that. So um, he tends to be a little digger and he likes to dig on things. And I think it's just his natural instinct, right? So he's never had to dig a hole for a place to sleep because he is well taken care of. <laughs> but I think it's just their natural instinct. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that circle. And you can use your layering circles or a circle punch, whatever you have on hand. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that gets firmly glued. And then now I can use my bone folder. I'm gonna start here. And I'm gonna hold my thumb on the top and I'm gonna let it ride around. And you see when I do that, it breaks down the fibers and it curls that end. So we're gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna curl this end. We're gonna do the other side of the green. Now you see this is a two-tone box, but the uh, when you no if you cut it and you do a normal one, you can cut it out of designer series paper, you can cut out of one color of cardstock. When you do that, you can cut it out of a piece of six by six, and it works out perfectly well. So here is the piece, and see, out of one piece of six by six, you can cut it out of one color if you wish. So as you can see, by me doing that, it really curled it very nicely. And we are going to go ahead and roll with that. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it together. So I will show you in a second here. I'm gonna grab my lint chocolate because that's what lives inside. We're gonna bend back on the score line where the handle is on the box. Okay, so we're gonna do that and get it 
pliable and then we're gonna hold those two handles together. And when we do that, it forms kind of a dome now that we've added that curl. And we're gonna go ahead and put one side on, it doesn't matter, one side or the other. So there's one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my chocolate on the inside and then we will um, put your other one through there and then that forms your little box. Isn't it so cute? So now we're going to decorate the box and we're gonna be using this confetti flower punch. So when you stick your piece into the punch and punch, you will get six little cut out flowers. Now I've already got, gone ahead and cut those out. I've done them in two colors. I did them in Poppy Parade and I did them in Daffodil Delight. And you can see that you get six different sizes. You get two minis, three large and a medium of each color flower. Now, I want these to be able to take these adorable iridescent rhinestones that I put in the centers and the babies won't hold that because they're too small, but I have used glittered shimmery crystal effects and to give it even more shimmer i have used my wink of stella pen but before we get to that insertion we are going to actually use this stylus point on our take your pick tool now you guys that watch me know i use this take your pick tool all the time and so i'm going to pull this end out which has the spatula end and the point and i'm going to insert the smaller stylus ball inside and i'm going to use the larger one and i'm going to go ahead and turn it to lock it so we're going to use this and we're just going to push down now the mat that I have underneath here is soft, so you want to use um, something like a stack of papers or your pad of grid paper or something like that that has some cushion to it so that when you roll this stylus ball, it lifts your flower petals up. So we're gonna do that to all of them, even the teeny tiny ones. So we're gonna go ahead and work our way through one at a time and it basically does the same thing that curling the paper on the bone folder does is it breaks down the fibers in the center of the flower which allows the flower to curve and it gives it that three-dimensional look so it looks more realistic on our box what it also does is give us a little mounded up area in which the glue can stick to adhere these pretty flowers to our box, okay? So let's go ahead, while we let those sit there for a second, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back out because I will be using this point end in a minute. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. We're going to attach the bunny with um, dimensionals and I'm using just the ends of what's left I definitely want to make sure that the bunny ears have um, dimensionals on them. So I am actually um, cutting my dimensional pieces in points so that it will fill that ear cavity there of my bunny. And that will help. Let's see, this piece might be too big. Might fit. I can curve it to fit. There we go. So there is the bunny. And I like, do like to use all the end pieces because we might as well use up every part of those dimensionals, right? So let's go ahead and attach our bunny, which is why I needed this pointy piece. I'm going to pull the backs off of my dimensionals and throw those in the trash. They can be sticky and um, staticky, which is why I like to pull them off with my... Um, take your pick tool because that way they don't um, stick to my floor of my craft room. So I've attached my bunny onto, let me fix him so he's a little bit straighter, near the bottom. You see how he's almost to the edge and then I'm going to use the molded section of the box and that's why I wanted 
the dimensionals even on his ears so that he could fit along that box piece and, t and mold to the shape of the box. So there's our bunny. And now we're gonna go ahead and decorate the sides. Now we already stamped this little floral section on the bottom with the mushrooms, but we're gonna go ahead and attach six flower pieces like this onto, let me move this ink pad over here so it has something to lean against so you guys can see it. So we're gonna go ahead and attach that onto our box. And I'm just gonna do that with my liquid glue. I'm basically just going to attach six little dots here. Onto my box and then I'm just gonna stick flowers on there and it doesn't really matter if you put four of one color Three of one color however you want yours to be is fine with me and you know, it's your box So you can make it any way you want. I'm just picking them up one at a time and sticking that raised little section up Onto that dot of glue that I have um, adhered onto it. So let's go ahead and put this one here. We'll take another small one. So there's, and I'll take another one of these and put it in this bottom section. Okay, so let those start grabbing on to the little dots of glue. I'm just gonna give them one more press. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. We're just gonna put six dots of glue onto our box here. And we will place our flowers on them. So cute, these flowers. I love that they're so tiny. These little baby ones are so precious to me. Let's put this little baby one over. Whoops. Dropped it, so we'll just go with a bigger one. It doesn't really matter. No rhyme or reason to my order of picking here. Just whatever I grab first. Um, if you like to be a little bit more precise, it's your box. You can do what you wish, right? And then let me grab this last teeny one and put it on that dot of glue there. All right, so we will give them one more press like I did with the other side, making sure that they are sticking to their glue. This little one is squirrely, it's sticking to my finger. Okay, there we go. All right. So we'll start on the other side first. And I'm gonna put Wink of Stella in the centers of the tiniest flowers because I wanna add a little bit of glitter into those centers before I attach my shimmery crystal effects. So I definitely want the flowers to be as glittery as possible, right? Make sure that there's some, there we go some flowing onto my brush. There we go. All right, so that's that one. Here's this one. All right, so now the flowers definitely have, um, I've added a tiny bit too much. I'm just gonna grab a small piece of napkin here, a paper towel, and dab that a little. I went a little overboard on that flower, but it'll be okay. The crystal effects will cover it nicely. All right, so let's go ahead and put the crystal effects. It comes like this in a little tube and um, it's fairly inexpensive. You just wanna make sure that you seal it really tightly um, because it can dry out. So we're gonna go ahead and put a nice tall blob in the middle. It does, um, as it dries, it does shrink a little bit. So it's okay to get a little excessive with it and it is stringy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and push that down onto that piece. And then we will do, and it, it does come off with soap and water, so it's um, very simple to wash your hands if you get any on yourself. So we'll go ahead and attach that one and do another one here for this one. 
just want to make sure that this last one I didn't push too much off that it definitely has some height to it there we go all right so there is the crystal effects because the um iridescent rhinestones are too big for those baby flowers but we're going to use not the large not the medium but the small and we're going to use the putty end of our take your pick tool. As you can see, I've used all these points, so it's definitely a versatile tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach those, well, if I can, into the center. <laughs> My little flower had a little accident, I think. I think I stuck it too hard onto there. Let's try and glue it back. Luckily, a little bit of uh, liquid adhe adhesive to the rescue. If it's going to happen to anyone, it will definitely happen to me. I'm really good at it. <laughs> you just got to laugh at yourself. No one's perfect, right? We're all human. Things happen. Definitely want to get this to stick, though. All right. There we go. Right in the center. Give it a little press. I'm going to grab... I'm going to start grabbing them with the point, I think, because I think my putty is getting stuck to my flowers. There we go. Give it a press. Let's go with the next one. All right, so that side's ready. Let's turn to this side. And we'll grab one of these, press it into the center, and another one, and two more to go. And of course, you know, this makes our bling. I love to put bling on all my projects and nothing better than these iridescent rhinestones because they take on the color of your project. So they're super nice. Here's our final one. And get it to stick in the center there. Come on, behave yourself little rhinestone there we go slide it into place all right make sure that those are all stuck on there rather nicely okay so let's go ahead and get the rhinestones put away so this is our cute little mini curvy keepsake box i hope that you have enjoyed watching me put it together it's certainly adorable, that's for sure. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it so much. Um, this is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Definitely check out my channel, subscribe, um, so that you get notifications of when I am live, because of course, you want to see lots more content, right? And I will be bringing it to you. Thank you again for watching. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping.